We have great news from the course. We managed to get 14 submissions from participants of the course, many of whom have never done any digital design or ASIC work before, plus two of the demo designs that I've created. Uh, combined them all together and made a submission for MPW2, and that was on the 18th of June, and we've just found out that that's been accepted and is going to be manufactured. So you can see all the designs here, and if you're interested in finding out more about any of them, then you can click on the submission page here, and that links to all the repositories, all the GDS, all the source code, all the tests, everything is open source. One common question that I get is how much can you fit into a 300 by 300 micron space? And hopefully looking at a few of these projects will give you an idea. So let's take a quick look at the process, how we aggregated all these designs together and made the submission. What I do is have a repository from each of the participants and clone that onto my computer. And then I use this file that is the configuration file to some Python tools that I wrote called the multi-project tools. And then I've got some switches here that I can run so I can run all these tests individually or I can run with test all. So we have the module test, we have the test in the context of the Caravel submission harness, we have a little bit of formal verification, connectivity checking, we have a tri-state test, we check the size, we check there's nothing on metal layer 5, we check there's no um, clock buffers being put on the outputs. We check that the module interface is correct and can be instantiated automatically. Running all the tests for all the designs in the end took about an hour and a half, which I don't think is that bad. And we can run each individual test on its own if necessary. Then when I'm ready, I run with this create open name config and that creates the configuration file, copies in all the GDS, instantiates the module inside the Verilog, and then I change to Caravel user project and run make user project wrapper, and that builds the final application. After every submission that I got from the course, I would go through this process, and that was great because I could see that everything was progressing, and then I would update the application on the eFabless website and make sure that the pre-check was running. Along the course of the way, we did have some issues we ran into because we added the IRQs, we added the, a new user clock, and those things meant that other people's repositories had to change. And also we discovered this um, clock buffer issue on the outputs, which would have messed up the bus. I did a separate video about that. And that meant that everyone who'd done a submission needed to update their configuration file, reharden their own GDS, then update the repository, and then I synced all the repositories and then rebuilt everything. Right at the end, we did have a problem with one of the last designs to be integrated. And when we finished the build, I noticed that there were some LVS errors. So if you want to know what LVS is, you can check out this web page. And what I think it was, was that the congestion in the design was quite high. So that means that there was wires right on the outside next to the pins. And when we build the final routing, it was ignoring that wiring. And then we were getting shorts that were leading to these LVS issues. I'm still not totally sure what caused that. But by expanding the size of the design a bit, we were able to fix that. So everything went ahead fine. I submitted on the morning of the 18th. And a few days afterwards, we got confirmation that we're on MPW2. So that is great news. And for the future, for MPW3, I want to be able to support designs of different sizes. I would love to be able to support analog designs. And one of the drawbacks of the tri-state bus is that it's less easy to run a test on an FPGA. So I think I may go back to the MUX design that I used for MPW1, but I'm not, not totally sure yet. If you want to learn how to do this stuff, then sign up to the mailing list and get alerted when the next tickets drop. Okay, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the update and I'm really looking forward to the video that I make when we start running some tests on some silicon.